I've wanted a set of the original Seeker trio from Transformers for quite a while, and when the Classics line came out, that seemed like it was going to be a good way to finally get the three and actually have them look like their cartoon versions. And then they made Skywarp and Thundercracker kind of irritating to get a hold of, so... This ended up being the best way to get the three of them. I absolutely loved the classics line back when that first started coming out because it was more cartoon accurate versions of some of the G1 characters. Though like I mentioned, finding certain characters in the classics line got a little annoying, then it stopped being the classics line, you had to get these type of figures in the universe line, and then I think later on generations or something? The main point being, there were a few lines you had to try and keep track of when it came to getting these type of figures. And the line kinda kept changing in Japan as well. The Seeker Aces set was released under the Transformers United line, but these figures were all originally released under the Henkai Henkai line. And I'm sure I said that perfectly. The Seeker Aces Triple Pack was actually an Asian exclusive. And there are a few differences between these figures and their original release. Now I gotta say how awesome the artwork is on this thing. This is an amazing depiction of the three original Seekers. And I can't help but love how badass Starscream looks on here. Look at him just leading his guys into battle. Probably against Megatron because he tripped and he's declaring himself the new leader! We got kind of an interesting quirk here on the box with the Takara Tomy logo on the front of it. But then we've got Hasbro markings on the bottom. However, there's a sticker covering some of it up with it saying Tomy again. I do really like how this box works too with just this flap here with the artwork that you can open up and then get a view of the figures. And on the flip side of the front of the box, you get a pretty cool shot of the three jets flying through the air. On the back of the box, we get the text specs and profiles of the three characters all in English, so that's kind of nice. It is a little strange though how they block off transform every single time so all you can see is Tran behind the three characters. I always loved how little sense some of these tech spec stats actually made when you really looked at them. Like, according to these, Thundercracker is the dumbest of the three, and Skywarp is the most intelligent. And I happen to know most of the time with Skywarp's bio, it usually says the opposite. But they must have changed it, otherwise that wouldn't make a lot of sense, right? Not terribly bright. Oops. Wow. You gotta love that. Intelligence 9. Not terribly bright. <laughs> if he was bright, he would have had 10, clearly. Starscreen's bio mentions his many attempts to overthrow Megatron, but I think my favorite part is he considers himself the most handsome of the Decepticons. Oh, I'm certainly not going to disagree with that. I mean, look at that face gimmick. Wait, his face is a gimmick? The bold Seeker face has been perfectly recreated. Look at that handsome devil. He is way more handsome than Thundercracker, even though his bold Seeker face has also been perfectly recreated. And then, of course, we've got that bold, super intelligent, but not very bright Skywarp face. It's a nice little touch as well that they've got that G1 grid background behind the jets here. Here the trio are in their jet mode, and I'm absolutely loving how these three look. They're painted so accurately to their cartoon models. Now here's a shot of the Seeker Aces Starscream up against his classic Starscream counterpart. You can see that the Seeker Aces one is painted much more accurately than the original Classics guy. Now I still do really like classic Starscream, but it is odd how different his paint job was compared to the character he was trying to emulate. And I gotta say, I just really like seeing the two Decepticon logos on the wings like this. On the Classics guy, you only get one. Sorta. 
It was cool and all that they were doing the rub symbols again on these guys, but their placement kind of left something to be desired, as on Starscream here, this just seems a little randomly slapped on. There's also a few points where they went more for G1 toy accuracy, like the blue tip on the nose cone, whereas this one's got the Decepticon logo on the nose cone like the cartoon. Sometimes, when they felt like putting it there, anyway. To really nitpick as well, you can see black for part of Starscream's head mode in his jet mode on the Classics guy where you can on the Seeker Aces one. Also, the shade of gray is slightly different on these two, with the Classics guy being a little more blue in hue versus the Seeker Aces a bit more yellowish tone. Skywarp and Thundercracker have had the same treatment versus their Classics counterparts, though Thundercracker in that line was a little more accurate, he just didn't have the Decepticon logos on the wings. One of the things I really liked that they added in jet mode was these Decepticon logos on the bottom side of the wings as well, just as another nice little touch. Transforming these guys is a fairly simple task, which I guess is good for me considering they list it as an easy transformation. You just pull down Starscream's legs, pop his feet out, flip the wings in. One of the more kind of tricky-ish parts, I suppose, with this transformation is kind of popping the fuselage into the chest area when he's in robot mode, but overall it's not too bad. And you just pull out the arms from the sides of jet mode, and their fists just easily rotate out from inside. And now to transform Skywarp and Thundercracker. There! I assume you guys are cool with that. I promise, their transformations aren't that much different than Starscream's. So one of the major differences with the figures in the Seeker Aces set versus their Henkai Henkai releases is they've got a much more metallic paint job. And I absolutely love it. These three look awesome with that. It is funny to me how much I like these three characters, even though Skywarp and Thundercracker kind of got the shaft later on in the series. Hell, one of the last times Thundercracker even said anything in the show, he didn't even have the right voice. And after the movie, Skywarp got turned into Cyclonus and Thundercracker into Scourge. Maybe, probably, whatever. I guess I've also always been kind of a sucker for recolor characters, because, I mean, Mortal Kombat did the same thing with the ninjas, and I loved them as well. Now, while I do absolutely love this mold for the Seeker characters, it does kind of have a couple flaws to it. One being that it's kind of hard to move the arms without having them bump into the wings. But they did at least think about that a little, and the wings easily bend back when you've got their arms more straightforward like this. Another little nitpick about the wings is when they're in robot mode, their Decepticon logo is actually upside down. Though those are usually covered up by the arms, which is another little nitpicky thing that I don't really like. On the actual G1 toy for Starscream, you could easily see the Decepticon logos on the wings and they're the right side up. Of course, his wings were lower than they were on the cartoon model, so you can't have everything. Unless, of course, you get the Masterpiece toy, whatever. And you know, I always liked Starscream, Skywarp, and Thundercracker, but I never really cared for the cone heads. And in G1, those were pretty much the exact same toy. They had some different wings and stuff, but here's how you made a cone head versus a regular Seeker. Ta-da! Cone Scream! Ramjet has fallen! I, Cone Scream, am now your dunce cap leader! I always assumed off screen that Star Scream, since he's the air commander, probably sent Coneheads on stupid missions that he didn't want to bother Skywarp or Thundercracker with. 
Because they were totally buddies all the time in this series, right? <laughs> Whatever. Alright, now let's compare Aces and Classic Starscream a bit in robot mode. Once again, you can see there are a couple details on Classic Starscream that seem to emulate the G1 toy more than the cartoon model. Like the kind of goldish spot on his kneecaps is a bit more like the stickers on G1 Starscream. Also, the golden detailing inside his shoulders again remind me of a sticker on the G1 toy. Now, because there was that little black spot on the nose cone in his jet mode, classic Starscream does look a little better from a profile shot like this. However, straight on, yeah, I feel like there's no real contest and the Ace's Starscream's face looks much better. I guess I can't really argue with their the bold seeker face has been perfectly recreated. And while just pretty much all over, I in general prefer the Ace's Starscream, I do kind of like this blue detailing on his shoulder cannons that is just flat gray on the Aces one. And it's kind of funny too that with the more metallic -y color scheme on the Aces guys that this is the one that has the metallic -y coloring on the shoulder cannons. Though my classic guy came with two cannons for the same arm, meaning the design that's facing forward will never match with them. So while this is a bit more accurate, it is a little flat looking. If they just had the chromed stuff at the top, it'd look nicer. But hey, at least I didn't get two for the same arm this time. I will admit that's not something I really thought about with my classic Starscream before, but now that I see it, it bugs me. Overall, Ace's Starscream's paint job is just a lot nicer than the original Classics one. Not that I dislike Classic Starscream, he's been my favorite Starscream that I've had for years. It's just, this is my new favorite. I've always been really impressed with the Seeker mold used for the Classics line, so getting it now with these much more cartoon accurate paint jobs makes me happy. These figures have a lot of points of articulation for good posability, and they look great in both robot and jet mode. Mostly it's minor nitpicks in the negative category, however, one of Skywarp's wings is a bit loose to the point of it'll shake around in robot mode. Also, it would have been nice if their arm cannons were a little more accurate to the show, as that was the main aim with these guys. Their arm cannons aren't horrible or anything, and they are bigger to accommodate the missile fire function, but they always use them as blasters on the show, so it wasn't really necessary. Also, the face of a Transformer being good can make or break a lot of them to me, and the bold Seeker faces paint job is really an improvement from the original Classics guy. Nine. This is the third repaint of the Seeker mold just for Starscream, Thundercracker, and Skywarp, so it's a bit silly when you look at it that way. However, they did keep changing the color schemes for the better, for the most part. Plus, this United pack was the most obtainable way to get this trio without running into hard-to-get exclusives nonsense. So, I'm not complaining. Five. The only weird thing is how how long it took to have an affordable way to get these three in this mold, Zero. I love the box these three came in. It'd be great if more Transformers came in this style of packaging. The artwork is fantastic, and the flap to reveal the figures underneath is a brilliant design. It's also got great throwbacks to G1 packaging, like the blurb about, It is a world transformed where things are not what they seem. It is the world of the Transformers. A world of heroes. Heroic Autobots and Evil Decepticons. Ten. And the MMZ overall is nine! These are awesome figures and the best representation of the Seekers besides going into the Masterpiece line. There could be a few minor improvements, but it's given me my new favorite figure of my favorite Transformer. Stop.
Roar, Scream. We just got our original bodies back. Do we really have to help you with another harebrained scheme to try to overthrow Megatron? You two owe me for tricking stupid Unicron's head again into turning you two back, so yes! Eh, don't worry. I think this plan of Starscream's will work out just fine, Thundercracker. Treacherous as always, aren't we, Starscream? You were saying, Skywarp? Oh, my text back lied to me. I'm not that bright. Megatron? Is that you? Yes, of course it is, Starscream! How could you possibly not recognize Megatron? Because you're a tank suddenly. But this body is an homage to my brilliant Generation 2 toy, because my gun form was too dangerous. I'd say you're looking awful geeky right now, Megatron. Silence, Thundercracker, or I'll make you watch our enhanced stories with the Cybernet Space Cube. I didn't think those were that bad. This is why no one respects your opinion, Skywarp. If they'd made me a tank, then those stories would have been worth something. <laughs> Well, you were listening to me a lot when I was Cyclonus, you crazy bastard. How did you turn back from Galvatron anyway, Megatron? That's a really simple story, actually. the Megatron. Starscream sent me on too many grocery Energon trips. Oh no, Ramjet. We surrender, don't we? Do we really? No. And don't you dare forget, Starscream. Ramjet stole Skywarp's color scheme in Generation 2. How does that help you? Decepticons retreat! Oh, classic. That's exactly what I was going to say. What the Cybernet Space Cube shit? 